AWS is like a huge box of Lego pieces, where each Lego block is a service. This block runs virtual machines. This one stores files. Another one manages databases. This one takes care of user permissions. And this one balances traffic. You choose the blocks you need and create your architecture. And we all know that with Legos, once you know how to connect the pieces together, you can build amazing stuff. But what is the problem these pieces are actually solving? The cloud is where modern applications are built today. And AWS is one of the platforms that makes it possible. When you want to launch a new project, even something small, there is a lot of stuff to handle. A server to run the application, storage for files, a database, secure network, user permissions, scaling, monitoring, and the list goes on. It is time consuming, slow, and honestly, easy to break. We needed something faster something more flexible, something that let us focus on our product instead of spending weeks on the infrastructure. And that's why so many companies use the cloud. This video will center around AWS, but the principles are the same across most cloud providers like Google Cloud or Azure. My name is Diego. I'm a network and systems engineer based in Paris, and I like breaking down tech concepts into simple and visual explanations. If you want to see more videos like this one, feel free to subscribe. And that's all. Back to the video. To understand this clearly, we are going to build something real. A simple online hoodie store. Just because I like hoodies, okay? Even if I'm not wearing one right now. We are going to design the architecture step by step using and explaining the most important AWS services. So let's start. Let's say we already have the website code ready, but we need a place to run it. We need a computer that is always on and accessible from the internet. So our website is available 24-7. The service EC2, or Elastic Compute Cloud, lets you rent virtual machines from AWS. In AWS, these VMs are called instances. You choose the type of instance you want, basically the CPU, memory, and storage. So we will create an EC2 instance and install our store application on it. This instance will respond when customers visit our site. But how is this instance going to communicate to receive those packets? VPC is a service that gives you your own virtual a private network inside AWS. You control which resources are public, which are private, and how everything communicates. We will place our EC2 inside a VPC, so it is isolated and protected. Now we have a server living in our own safe network. You see these images on our website? If we store those images on the EC2 server itself, it becomes expensive. The disk of our instance might get full, and it is also hard to share those images with other servers. S3, or Simple Storage Service, offers storage in the cloud that is durable, cheap, and unlimited. According to this article, Canva has 230 petabytes stored in S3 pockets. Just to give you an idea, if you try downloading that amount from your home, assuming you have a one gigabyte internet connection, it will take you around 58 years. So yeah, S3 is built for massive scale. We will be fine uploading our hoodie images to an S3 bucket. Now, our website can display product pictures in a reliable and cheap way. Then we need to save customer accounts, inventory data, and orders. We could install a database manually, but that means handling stuff like backups and updates ourselves. RDS is the service that provides you a relational database, like MySQL or Postgres, configured and maintained automatically by AWS. We will create a MySQL database using RDS to store and keep track of things like users, orders, and inventory. Now we have our data stored in a reliable and scalable database. But there is a small problem here. Our EC2 instance cannot access the S3 bucket or the RDS database yet. It has no permissions. IAM is the service that controls who can access what in AWS. We need to create an IAM role for our EC2 that allows it to read S3 buckets and connect to our RDS database. Now they can communicate securely without having to store any passwords in the code. It is time to buy the domain hoodiestore.com. Route 53 is AWS domain name and DNS service. It maps domains to their corresponding IP addresses. Route 53 will point hoodiestore.com to our EC2 instance. But before we open our digital doors, we need a way to monitor if everything is running well. Like if it was a real store, we will need security cameras and someone watching them. That's AWS CloudWatch service. It watches performance, collects logs, and sends alerts if anything breaks or slows down. Stuff like traffic spikes, errors, or our database getting overloaded. We will know it right away, and we can fix it before customers even notice that there is a problem. Now the store is ready. We open the doors and our first customer arrives. Of course, we celebrate. Days go by and our store is becoming popular. 
Our single EC2 instance is starting to struggle with the increase of the traffic. Let's solve this. Autoscaling is the AWS service that adds or removes instances based on demand. During high traffic, more servers are launched automatically. When traffic decreases, the servers scale down to save cost. Now that we have more than one instance, we need to balance the requests between them. Elastic Load Balancing, or ELB, distributes incoming traffic across multiple servers. The load balancer ensures that no single server gets overwhelmed. If a server fails, the load balancer stops sending traffic to it. Our instances are stable. We are good now. Oh no. CloudWatch is sending another alert. It is our checkout process. It is getting really slow. When a customer clicks place order, our app does the following. Confirms inventory, writes to the database, sends emails, updates analytics, and more stuff. It is doing all that while the page keeps loading before showing the order confirmed message. Making the customers wait, that is not cool for our image. And it slows everything down. We can even lose customers because of this. What if, instead of processing the order immediately, we drop it into a queue and we treat it later? SQS, or Simple Queue Service, allows us to process work later in the background instead of during the customer interaction. So now the customer will see order confirm instantly, even if the work happens later. But I have a question. How we are going to handle the tasks that are in the queue? AWS Lambda allows you to trigger pieces of code without needing a server. This is what we call serverless. Lambda will read the orders from the SQS queue and process them. For example, update our database inventory, schedule the shipping's order, and send the email your order is on the way. This way, the system becomes efficient and customers stay happy. Our store keeps growing and we start shipping internationally. Customers from the other side of the world begin visiting the store, but they report that it's taking too long to load. This is normal. Our store is hosted in an European region of AWS, and distance matters. How we can solve this? AWS CloudFront is a global CDN service. It stores copies of your images and assets closer to all the users worldwide. Now, it doesn't matter if someone is in New York, Tokyo, or Sao Paulo. Our store loads fast. We are officially global. We start updating our website more often, but deploying changes directly to the servers is starting to feel messy. We are even breaking production sometimes. So instead, we will replace them with containers. I have a full video explaining Docker and what is a container if you want to check it out. AWS has two main services that run these containers. ECS, or Elastic Container Service. This is the simpler one. AWS runs our containers and handles the scaling for us. Then there is EKS, or Elastic Kubernetes Service. If our hoodie store becomes a massive platform, EKS helps to orchestrate every part of our application. You usually only need EKS when your application becomes really large. We won't go deep into this right now, I just want you to know they exist. I can make another video covering only these two. They are more related to DevOps in the cloud. I have a full video explaining the DevOps process if you are interested. But for now, let's check back on our store. Just look at our final architecture. It is working as stable and at scale. We cover the core building blocks, the services you will use in almost every real-world architecture. But AWS is much bigger than this. There are hundreds of services, and some of the services are surprisingly cool. For example, Ground Station lets you communicate with satellites. And I'm not talking about downloading basic satellite images. I mean actually establishing communication using satellites. Deep Racer is a self-driving car you can train with machine learning. And then do some races. Bracket. AWS Quantum Computing Service. It is like experimentation mode for the future. So yes, whether you are building a hoodie shop, a global application, or a space tech, AWS has a Lego piece for that. If this video helped you to understand AWS better, give me some feedback in the comments. I will appreciate it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.